Welcome to Trust Process. So this is the continuation of uh, part B, question two. Now to answer this question, the question is saying, a second spring B of spring constant 2 Ka, meaning twice that of spring A, is now joined to spring A as shown on figure 9.11. A force of 6.4 Newton extends the combination of the springs. For the combination of the springs, calculate the total extension as well as the spring constant. Now, to answer this question, you need the concept of the spring arrangement. Springs can be arranged in two ways. You have series connection as well as parallel connection. How do you deal with springs when they are arranged in a series connection? So let me just talk more about the two types of arrangements that we have. Now, what must you know about the series connection of springs? So springs that are connected in series are supposed to look in this manner. This is when they are arranged in a vertical direction. Horizontal direction, they are supposed to look like this, like that. So if this is the force, a downward force that is exerted, and that is the force exerted, what you have to know about if this is spring 1, spring 2, this spring is going to have a spring constant of K1. The other one is going to have a spring constant of K2. Same applies to this. If this is 1, that is 2. This will be K1, that will be K2. Now, the only difference between this scenario and that scenario is that this is the vertical arrangement. That is the horizontal arrangement. But the concept for this one are going to be applicable to that one because both springs are arranged in a series connection. Now, what you have to know about the series connection of springs is that this force that is exerted is going to be experienced by these two springs evenly, meaning spring 2 is going to experience that force spring 1 is also experiencing the same force of which we can say the force that is exerted is known as the effective force or the total force this total force should be equal to the force that spring 1 is experiencing at the same time is equal to the force that spring 2 is experiencing this is for the series connection what can you say about the extension the, we, we cannot make an assumption that the extension is going to be the same because we don't know whether if the spring constants are the same. Because that can only be the case if the spring constants are the same. But we surely we don't know if that is the case. So we can say that since this spring is going to be extended by an amount x1 and that one will be extended by an amount x2, we can say the effective or the total extension is just given by x1, the extension of the first spring, plus x2, the extension of the second spring. That's what we can say. Meaning, these can now be written. Ideally, what we want to come up with here is the formula of how you can find the effective spring constant for springs that are connected in series. So, we know from Hooke's law that F is equal to Kx. Making K subject of the formula, you have K is equal to F over X. So, if that is the case, you can also make X subject of the formula here. If X is the one that is subject of the formula, you are going to have X is equal to F over K. Okay? Now, if you compare this equation, you plug in this equation here into this equation for the effective extension. The effective extension here, it will mean effective extension is given by effective force over effective spring constant. 
So where there is there is effective extension here, you can say this is the same as effective force over the effective spring constant, like that. Okay, which would be equal to the extension for the first spring would be equal to the force exerted on the first spring over the spring constant for the first spring plus the extension on the second spring is given by, with reference to this, is given by the force exerted on the second string over the spring constant on the second spring. But we know that when these uh, springs are connected in series, the effective force is equal to the force exerted on spring 1 is equal to the force exerted on spring 2 and so on. You can also have a lot of springs. Meaning, you can say this, that, that cancel because these are going to be of the same value. Hence, you have 1 over the effective spring constant being equal to 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2. Like that. So, making this subject of the formula, you have... Um, 1 over k effective is equal to k1 plus k2 over k1 k2 meaning the effective spring constant would just be equal to k1 k2 over k1 plus k2 like that if you want you can use it from here it doesn't matter but when you make it subject to a formula for two springs this is what you're going to have. Okay, now, let's go back to the question. The question is saying, the question is saying, there is an extra spring that has been put there, and that is spring B. This spring B has a spring constant of, spring B has a spring constant of 2Ka. So, we know that uh, the spring constant for A, so we have spring A, spring A having the spring constant, the spring constant for A, so spring A here, as Ka, whose value is known, the value for the spring constant for A is here, we calculated it, and then spring B, spring B as spring constant 2 Ka. Okay, so from the diagram, we are able to see that these two springs are connected in, in series. So, how do you find the total extension? How do you find the total extension? So, finding the total extension, finding the total extension, you just have to say the extension for spring A plus the extension for spring B from this formula here. Finding the total extension, which is the extension for spring A, the extension for spring B. That is how you find the total extension. Okay? Now, how is it going to be? Alright, so this is how you're going to find the total extension now. So we have uh, spring A, that has the spring constant, Ka. Spring B, that has the spring constant, 2Ka. And then, since these two springs are in series connection, we know that this spring is experiencing the force of 6.4, the one that is exerted. This spring is also experiencing the force of uh, 6.4 newtons. So, clearly, you know the extension that was caused by 6.4 for spring A. According to the sketch, from the sketch here, this, the force, the extension that was caused by 6.4 is nothing but 8 centimeters. So, you know that for spring A, this force of 6.4 was causing 8 centimeters. What about spring B, whose spring constant is just twice that of spring A? 
So spring B, whose spring constant is just twice that of spring A, is going to cause what force? What will be the extension caused by this force? Sorry. The extension is expected to be halved, meaning it has to be half of this. Why am I saying that? We know that uh, force is equal to kx. And then we are trying to find the extension. Extension is equal to f over f over k. Now, what happens when you double the spring constant, maintaining the force? So this is the original thing. This is the original thing. And then for spring B, the other spring, we know that the force for B is just F, but the spring constant is 2K. It has been doubled. What is going to happen to its extension? So the extension here, you have F over 2K, of which you say the extension is just going to be 1 over 2 multiplied by F over K, where this is the, the first extension that you have. Okay? So the extension for B is going to be 1 over 2, that of A. Alright, and clearly it's making sense because this, this one is stiffer than that one. Spring con the spring B is going to be stiffer than e, spring A because the stiffness depends on the uh, spring constant. That's why we also say the stiffness of the spring. So since this is stiffer than that one, and they're exposed to the same force, we expect this to have a smaller extension. So the extension for this one is directly going to be equal to 4 centimeters, clearly, because of that relationship. Okay? Why? Because the spring constant has been doubled. When you double the spring constant, the extension has to, root, has to be halved provided that the force is the same. So, the total extension is just going to be uh, x effective will be equal to the it will be equal to 8 centimeters 8 centimeters, sorry plus 4 centimeters which is just 12 centimeters and this is nothing but 12 times 10 to the negative 2 meters which can be written as 0 0.12 meters as the total extension. Okay, the last question is saying, find, calculate the spring constant now. So we know that the effective, the effective force should be equal to K, the effective spring constant, multiplied by the effective extension, like that. So the effective spring constant is just equal to the effective force over the effective extension of which you know that the effective force is 6.4 over the effective extension which is the total is just 0 0.12 when you divide this you are going to get some value which you can punch I believe you can punch that so punching that you are going to get a value of something like 53.3 newton per meter if not mistaken that is going to be the effective effective uh, spring constant like that or you can also use that other method where we said the effective spring constant for springs that are connected in series is given by since we just have two there we are going to have effective is equal to k a plus multiplied by k b over k a plus k b now here we are going to have um, this is just k a then that is 2 k a over that is uh, k a or multiplied by then here plus 2 k a and then you are just going to have 2ka squared over 3ka. You know the spring constant for A. You can plug in the value and I expect you to get the same value, the same answer as 
the previous method this method this